Welcome to the WordPress Photography Podcast, the podcast for photographers who want to learn how to get the most out of WordPress to grow their photography business. You don't need to be a geek to understand WordPress. Settle back and listen as we show you how. Now, here's your host, Scott Wyden Kivowitz. The earth without art is just eh. Hi, my name is Scott Weidenkivowitz. You're listening to the WordPress Photography Podcast. This is episode 102. My name is Scott Weidenkivowitz. I am your host and the chief community officer here at Imagely. Today, I want to share with you what I would suggest for somebody who is exclusively, exclusively a headshot photographer, meaning somebody who is not any other genre of photography. I mean, maybe you do full lifestyle brand photos, or maybe not. Maybe you do full portraits, but typically your aim is headshots, right? You offer headshots to business people, to actors, to musicians, to speakers, and so on. Well, your website should be finely focused. It should be very, very specific and its goal should be to convert people to hire you for headshots. That should be its goal. Sure, you might have some a blog where you share some content that is educational and also entertaining to your audience, to the people who might want to hire you. But the design aspect of your website should be very simple and very straightforward so that there's a fine needle, sharp, pinpoint focus, pun intended, in order to get people to see your work and easily hire you. So my suggestion is this. First, in the header, keep it very simple. Of course, your logo is at the top. And then in the menu are either three or four items. The menu will have pricing, contact, and then a book now button. If you're going to have a blog. Of course, you might want to put a blog up there, but you don't have to. You could put the blog in like, let's say, a footer menu if you wanted to. But ideally, you have at least two menu items and the book now button or three menu items and the book now button, but no more. And then below that, you have a beautiful gallery of, of photos and a call to action, a box of some sort that's talks a little bit about you, not too much, just the right amount, and a button so people can see your pricing, and a button so people can get a quote for a group, you know, group headshots. If you're, let's say, going to go to a business and photograph all the C-level employees, then a group um, quote would be necessary. Or you're going to a startup and you need to photograph all the employees, a group quote might be necessary. Now, maybe below the grid of portraits, you might have a little bit about you. So you might have a video trailer about yourself, about your photography services, a little bit about you, add some, you know, keywords in there for SEO, stuff like that. And again, that book now button will be there as well. And then maybe below that, you might have some testimonials from clients. Of course, you can make an entire testimonial page. I would not put that in the header menu, but that might be something else you put in a footer menu. But you want testimonials from clients, of course. And if you don't have any yet, do some headshots for free in exchange for some good testimonials to get started if this is your new business. If you're pre-existing, just ask existing clients for testimonials. And then at the bottom, of course, you will have a footer menu. And this is good for mobile, really, more than anything else. But the footer menu might have more things in it, like the blog. It might have your testimonials, maybe some other things, maybe some social icons for people to know where to find you in social media. But if we move on to the pricing page, you're going to keep it simple. Again, a very short gallery of images, not too many, right? Not too little, but not too many. And you're going to have basically two boxes. One box is going to have your pricing and the other box is going to have the booking solution. Now, this booking solution won't just be a click here to book. It's going to be the booking solution embedded on that page. So you can either use a WordPress plugin like Amelia, which I'll link to in the show notes, or you can use a Calendly or or you could use Square, any software as a service based booking system and embed that onto your website. And of course, you can embed that in WordPress, in Wix, in Weebly, in Squarespace, whatever you're doing, you can embed that 
in on your site. But it is important that your pricing page is just that. It is very straightforward pricing. If you want a good system for pricing and structuring the business around headshots, I, I recommend checking out the TNT method. I will link to that in the show notes, and I hope to have Tony, who created this method, on the show in the future, and I can connect to this episode, which, is, which will be really good. So um, I, that's what I recommend. I will link to that method, that course, in the show notes. Now, on the contact page, it's going to be very straightforward. Again, similar layout to your pricing page, except... It's going to be on the left, you'll have sort of your address and phone number and email address. On the right, you'll have the, the contact form, right? Uh, and then the booking, the book now page will actually actually go back to your pricing page because that's where you want people to go. But let's say somebody wants a group quote. You're going to have another page. And that could be, again, a similar, similar layout to your contact page, except it's to get a quote for a group headshot. And the reason why this is important to have a separate page is that you can track who is contacting you just to contact you for whatever reason, and then who is contacting you for a quote specifically. Now, if you're doing a blog, of course, you want to make sure you're educating your clients. You want to make sure that uh, you're teaching them about preparing for a headshot and what to expect in their headshot, headshot session and things like that. But you can drip in there some entertaining content, some uh, stories from past clients or things like that. There's no reason why you can't do that. Last but not least, if you're doing testimonials, how you lay that out is completely up to you. There's no set method, but I do recommend keeping it clean. Even if you have two or three columns and you're, you're embedding your Facebook's testimonials or you're, you're, you're just copying and pasting and using uh, quote blocks that are in the WordPress block editor or you're creating graphics for it, whatever it is, you need to keep that clean because the more testimonials you have, which is good, by the way, the more cluttered it can get. In fact, one way to break that up is if you have video testimonials, that would be even better because then you can do some text or image testimonials and break it up with some video content. And video content is really good for your brand. Uh, it's, it's so engaging for people to view uh, your, 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 your testimonials from clients in video form. Seeing people, hearing people actually talk about you as a business is really a great conversion uh, boost uh, platform. A quick shout out to Ryan Backherms from backhermsphotography.com. Ryan is an Indianapolis portrait photographer and he left a really kind review for us on Apple Podcasts. He said, I love this podcast. It's very informative and provides actionable insights. Highly recommend. Thank you, Ryan. We really appreciate it. If you would like a shout out on the podcast, just like Ryan, then I have an opportunity for you. You see, I want to see more reviews for this show. So here is my offer. Leave a review on the podcast platform that you subscribe through. If that podcast platform offers the ability to leave a review, if not, just go to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. Leave a wonderful five-star review for the show. Then go to imagely.com slash podcast slash R and complete the form there. And what I would do is I will do a shout out for you on one of the future episodes and include a link to your site as a thank you in the show notes, which of course is good for your SEO because now you've got a nice backlink to your site from imagely.com. All listeners are welcome to take me up on this offer. So that is what I recommend for a headshot website because it's simple and it's straightforward and it will get you bookings. At Imagely, we have been working hard on getting the Imagely Sites platform, our hosting platform, relaunched. And I'm hoping that I can actually get this template that I've been working on for headshot photographers as a preset website design in Imagely Sites. So stay tuned. Uh, I will hopefully have that for you at some point. But in the meantime, if you have any questions about headshot photography websites, the headshot photography business. If you want to check out the links that I mentioned in this episode, check out the show notes at imagely.com slash podcast slash 102. Thanks for listening. See you in the next episode.
You've been listening to the WordPress Photography Podcast. To listen to other episodes and to subscribe to the podcast via iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and more, please visit imagely.com forward slash podcast. 